you are a boxing junkie. So in <laughs> this segment, yes. no further ado, it's time to box. Let's do this. We got to talk some boxing now. Yes, so we have, yes, we have fights coming up this weekend. Yes. And with people that you are you have near and dear to your heart and i know because i've seen you do some posting and joshua anthony aj aj is in the building this weekend getting his feet wet against pull up on the 12th so y'all tune in to watch anthony joshua you know two years ago he had taken the boxing world and was creating the brand in another kind of way that we hadn't seen since the days of Sugar Ray Lemon, Leonard, the looks, the cachet, the professionalism, the hate, <laughs> the love. Wait, you know what? Yeah. You, you, we we talked about this before. Yeah. Haters. Yeah. Are lovers because they make you work harder. Yeah. They we should. need haters. So you gotta haters have. Make you. That's right. Yes. So, Ghost follow. Yes. They, they yeah. follow. <laughs> That's your new phrase. You're able to use it. People who don't understand ghost followers, those are the people that are following. They won't support you physically, but they'll never leave your side. They're always there, like the uncle with a shotgun. If anybody ever touches niece, it's gonna be problems. But I have one of those dads. Yeah, so you know, you know the deal. So mm -hmm. I I know it's probably from a biased standpoint. How do you feel, Anthony Joshua, will enter 2020 fighting again since the Ruiz fight? How do you see him looking? What do you feel? What does your gut tell you about Anthony Joshua? Do you feel like he's gotten those demons and screaming out of his mind now? Oh my gosh, did he ever? You know what? And and it's the and and I'm I'm gonna qualify this statement i am not i'm not a cheerleader for aj i respect anthony joshua for his work ethic yeah. for his candidness and and transparency yeah i can explain to you why when he fought andy reese at madison square garden i had the honor it was to, to walk into his locker room right before he walked into the ring mm -hmm. and, and i understand the fighting in the u.s is it, it could be a bit intimidating it's a different environment uh, he was not in his uh, element. In his element. His zone. That's his comfort in, zone. In his comfort zone. And I asked him, you know, uh, how has your your uh, you know all fighters have um, certain things that they do yeah. uh, right before they walk into the ring? Be it because of, yeah, the rituals and and traditions and whatever. Be it because of health wise or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I knew that he couldn't. He something was off. Yeah. And he was very open about it. He said, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling myself today. There's, yeah. I'm not feeling myself today. And I said, is it because Madison Square Garden? I mean, this is the Mecca boxing. He yeah. goes, maybe that's it. I'm not sure. And sure enough, you know, he took that loss. It, it was a heartfelt loss. It took him about three days. But when he came out for air and he spoke to us, again, he was very clear, mm -hmm. always very respectful of mm -hmm. not just his opponent, the environment, Madison yeah. Square Garden, what what that meant for his career, yeah. and how he knew that he was not invincible. He says, "I there's a difference between being invincible and having a winner mindset. I am a winner, but winners have bad days at the office. I just had yeah. one. When I had a chance to speak to him again at uh, in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, I could see that." self-assurance, the assertiveness. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, just relate that same feeling to somebody that I know very well, like uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, like Julio Cesar Chavez, and I could give yeah. you a long list. Um, a loss doesn't make a champion. It no. doesn't break a champion. A loss just teaches, going back to the obstacle. Yeah. A loss is just another stripe in a tiger's fur. Yeah. And in that case, that tiger came out and did his fight, his style, his way, and he took Andy from the hand and gave him a boxing lesson. Yeah. Was Andy at any given time less of a fighter? No. We, we can dissect this fight back and forth. No. Now, we're not going to compare. I cannot, with any self-assurance, 
say that Kubrat Pulev is anything less than Andy Reese. Kubrat Pulev has his own credentials, yeah. his own accolades. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, we, we always relate to that basic math in boxing, which it went out the window back in June in 2019. The bigger man will win. Yeah. AJ is bigger, faster, longer reach. And he's been exposed to a completely different level of opponents. Kubrat is... He, it's going to be a tough fight because he's, he's diligent and he's steadfast and he's got a chin. Mm-hmm. But I think um, AJ is going to take that win. Yeah. And when you look at a fighter, the thing that has to happen is when you're fighting, you can't sleep during that fight any time. Exactly. And, you know, when you're trying to get a guy out of there and you are not defensively responsible, counter punches happen. You play basketball. Ask you down play basketball. Ball. You don't play boxing. And, no. you know, he learned that lesson. He was able to go back to the drawing board, make the adjustment. That's what a true champion does. 